سلام الله يا زهراء سلام الطيب والكوثر لك الأعناق حانية تروم شفاة المحشر سلام الله سلام الله سلام الله يا زهراء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين Respected elders, scholars, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله We have assembled tonight here to celebrate the anniversary of the birth of the Holy Lady Fatima, the daughter of the last Prophet Muhammad bin Abdullah. The Quran instructs the followers of the Prophets to remember the different bounties that God grants them. And one of the important bounties that God grants is guidance, the message, and the messengers. In Surah Ma'idah, chapter 5, ayah number 20, Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ O Prophet, remember the time when Musa, the Prophet, sent to Bani Israel, instructed and reminded his people, Ya qawmi, O oh my dear people, let me remind you of something which is very important. Uzkuru ni'matallahi alaykum. Remember the different blessings and the bounties that God grants you. Remember there is a God, but this God is all caring, all loving, all merciful, and therefore constantly blesses you. Do you remember there was a time when you were under oppression, He liberated you? Do you remember the time when you were traveling in the desert, you needed food, he sent down heavenly food, you needed drink, he made a miraculous water available, you needed shelter, he provided the clouds, and finally he facilitated your settlement into the holy, sacred, promised land. But one of the important ni'mah which they have been instructed to remember is the fact that messengers were sent to them. Idh. جَعَلَ فِيكُمْ Allah sent messengers to you. In your own time, you had Musa السلام, and Harun and Yusha, the wasi of Musa. And then afterwards, you had Prophet Dawood and Prophet Sulaiman and Prophet Zakariya and Prophet Yahya to remember the material bounties and to forget the cause and the medium for those material bounties by which Allah blessed these people is wrong. And therefore it's important for us to remember the messenger and those related to the messenger. And Allah blessed you with certain bounties that nobody else in your time was blessed with. The Holy Lady Fatima <laughs> occupies a unique status as far as the last prophet is concerned. And if we can compare the frequency with which holy women and holy ladies are mentioned, there is no lady more frequently mentioned than the chaste, pure, purified Holy Lady Maryam in the Quran. 34 times she's mentioned in the Quran. A whole surah, chapter 19, is named after her. And she is introduced as Sayyida of Nisa al Alameen. But the Holy Lady Fatima is Sayyida to Nisa al Alameen min al awwaleen wal akhirin. She is not only the best of the women of her time, she is the best of the women for all times. If the best of the women of her time is mentioned more than 30 times in the Quran, obviously we should remember the ni'mah 
the supreme blessing which Allah has sent down to us in the form of the Holy Lady even more therefore. Allow me therefore to analyze this famous hadith known as Hadith Al-Kisa which illustrates the supreme status of this Holy Lady in a unique way. Hadith Al-Kisa obviously you know is named because of the famous incident which took place surrounding the uh, episode of the members of the Ahlul Bayt salam, coming to visit and meeting the Prophet and then being surrounded by the Kisa and the cloak. The Hadith is narrated not only in uh, our Shia sources but general Muslim sources. Not only Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari has narrated it, many other companions have narrated it. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri has narrated it. Uh, Zayd bin Arqam has narrated it. And uh, the wives of the Prophet, Umm Salama and Bi Aisha, all of them have narrated this incident. Of course, the details vary. From the shortest version which says that these four are my Ahlul Bayt from that shortest version to the longest and most detailed version which we popularly and frequently recite. And allow me to set the tone. The reason we recite this hadith is because it demonstrates the supreme status of the Holy Lady and the other members of the Ahlul Bayt but notice towards the end, the Holy Prophet is reported to have said that whosoever narrates and recounts this incident, then the angels will come and pray for that person. If he is from our followers and those who admire and love us, then if they are in any affliction, then Allah will rescue them and protect them from those worries and afflictions. Lakini. It's not enough to know who the Ahlul Bayt is. Many people knew who the Ahlul Bayt were in their times, but yet they did not respect them. It's not enough to love, to claim to love them. True love must have practical evidence. You must have deep respect for them, reverence for them. And therefore the desire and the aspiration to follow them. If these conditions are there, the ma'rifa is there, and therefore the true mahabba is there, and therefore the desire to follow is there, and therefore the wilaya and the bara'a, then angels will pray. Then the dua for rescue from afflictions will work. So with this attitude and with this approach, now let's consider the details of that uh, hadith. An Fatimah al-Zahra. Of course, like I said, different narrators have reported this hadith, but this particular version is from Jabir, who says, I heard it from the Holy Lady. Also, the Holy Lady told Jabir, also, it is no problem for a woman to talk to a man. Where did Jabir hear it? And therefore, to talk to an mahram is no problem, especially when it's necessary especially when it is for guidance, for instruction, for demonstrating the truth, for allowing transmission and publication and publicizing the truth. And incidentally, therefore, if she did it and she was a role model, therefore for us also it is mustahab to report and to narrate and to recount this hadith because she did it to Jabir. That dakhala alayya abi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi on one occasion, my father came to visit me. Notice the respectful manner in which she is referring to her father. Yes, he was the father and she could have just said, my father came to visit me. But she says, do you know who my father is? My father, the prophet of God, the messenger of God. Very important, small piece of advice. When you refer to even your relatives, be it your father, be it your brother, be it your sister, if they have a status, if they have an authority, acknowledge it and respect them by mentioning that particular status that they have. 
فقال السلام عليك يا فاطمة and the father comes to visit her and he begins with the greeting to the daughter greeting is mustahab especially by the elder or the younger the holy prophet's sunnah was that he would always preempt and precede others to make salam and this is very important unfortunately we have some people who may occupy positions of authority or power but who somehow for some reason uh, create an aura around themselves whereby they become somehow inaccessible to ordinary people salam is an expression of that humility that yes i may occupy a higher position and status but I'm available, I'm accessible. If you have any problems, just come and visit me and I'll listen to you. Salam from the older to the younger. Very important. And notice the Prophet doesn't say, Assalamu alayki wa rahmatullah wa ghufranullah wa barakatullah. No. Assalamu alayki. Simple and short. The Quran has even shorter than that. In Surah Hud, the angels come and visit Ibrahim and say salam. Ibrahim also answers them salam. This one single word, profound, we'll, we'll look into it, uh, what it means. Salam basically has different meanings. So, may Allah grant you peace. Or beyond that, there is peace between me and you. I have no intention to harm you or to hurt you or to injure your feelings or to disrespect you. I've come here with good intentions. Salam. Or beyond that, Salam, I pray to God to grant you peace. Not only my intention towards you is peaceful, I'm praying to God to give you peace. Or no, a third and a higher meaning of Salam is Salam is one of the names of God, as mentioned in Surah Al-Hashr, that huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu al-malikul quddusus salam. God is the source of peace, creator of peace, maintainer of peace, peace and purity and perfection, all of this under salam. So it's as if the deeper meaning of salam would be, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam Oh Lord, you are the creator, you are the provider, you are the maintainer. Your abode is an abode of peace and purity and progress and perfection. Oh Allah, therefore, give us some of that. That's the true spirit or the higher meaning of salam. when the Prophet greeted me, I also responded to him. Of course, response is wajib. Notice she doesn't even respond in that detailed manner. وَعَلَيْكَ السَّلَامُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ بِالرَّحْمَةِ وَالْمَغْفِرَةِ وَالْرِضْوَانِ وَالْبَرَكَةِ No, وَعَلَيْكَ السَّلَامُ Short and complete. Depends on what you mean by the word salam. قَالَ إِنِّي أَجِدُ فِي بَدَنِي ضُعْفًا مُسْتَحَبْ You feel some weakness, you're stressed out, no problem, come and share it with your family members. To come and complain of your personal illnesses out to others, no, that is makru. But to share it with your own family members, the Prophet did it with his daughter. So the daughter immediately responds by making arrangements. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ And therefore I responded to him, O Jabir, I told him privately, this was between me and him, nobody knows, nobody has yet arrived. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ أُعِيذُكَ بِاللَّهِ يَا أَبَتَاهُ مِنَ الضُّعْفِ When somebody expresses their problems to you, it's wrong to be indifferent, to keep silent. If true there is salam, if true there is the wish and the desire to help, you should feel concerned. And you know if you have the capacity to help, offer help. If you don't have the capacity to help, the minimum is, let's pray to God, to help and to provide help with whatever other means available. I seek protection of God for you from any 
weaknesses. My desire for you is to be healthy, to be strong, to be dynamic, to be active and be able to carry out your duty. Allahumma qawwini. It's mustahab to make this dua. Oh Allah, give me quwwa, give me strength. Allahumma qawwini. Bi sultanika. Bi jahi Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Riwaya says, Fi sabilika, ala iqamati amrika, ala ma khalaqtani lah. Oh Allah, give me the strength. Because you are the all-powerful one. So that I may use this strength in your cause to defend your cause and advance your cause and win your pleasure. So that I may establish your word and your goal of perfection and creation on the earth. Mustahab therefore to make a dua. Uidhuka billah min al There's one riwayah which says that in Allah yuhibbu shaja'a. Allah loves a person to be strong and brave and courageous. Even to the minimum extent of being able to kill a small snake. I imagine those people who get scared with cockroaches and mice. Mustahab, make a dua. The cockroach is more afraid of you than you are afraid of it. Eatini bil kisa il yamani fagatini bi. Get me that wide, broad cloak. Remember, it was so broad and so wide that further down the line we will see it had the capacity to be able to accommodate and to cover five full adults, people with him and two young children. So, no problem. A father can request from his daughter. No, he can order her, get me the cloak, cover me with the cloak. No problem. The father has the authority to ask his daughter, even after she's married, to make that request. And it is the duty of the daughter to comply. I brought it immediately and I covered him with it. In the Quran, when Allah says, not in one place, but four or five different places, Wabil walidaini ihsana, it's the duty of the children to respect their parents. Allah doesn't say that you obey your parents, it says beyond obedience. Ihsan is to be able to comply and to fulfill the wishes of the parents. Even before they request it. Ihsan. This is the tafsir of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Yes, on this occasion, she did not have the chance to figure out before he made his request what his needs are. But the moment the Prophet, the father, expressed the needs, immediately she responds and provides. وَصِرْتُ أَنظُرُ إِلَيْهِ Jabir. I then started staring at him and gazing at him continuously. Mustahab, Mustahab, to look at your father, ordinary father, out of love, out of respect, out of affection, it's ibadah. More so if the father is a respected person, an alim for example. Absolutely so if the father is the prophet and the best of the prophets. Kwanini, sababu, if it is an act of ibadah, it means that it is an act which is enabling us to get closer to God. By looking at His face, you admire somebody who is good, virtuous, righteous, pious. And therefore, the desire to become virtuous and pious and righteous is aroused in us by this act of looking. وَإِذَا وَجْهُهُ يَتَلَأْلَأُ كَأَنَّهُ الْبَدْرُ and then I noticed something. His face was shining brilliantly. How do I explain to you? Have you seen the Badr? The Badr is the moon of the 14th night. No, no, no. Tamam wa kamal. 13th night, 14th night, 15th night. A bright, full moon uncovered by any clouds or haze. Absolutely brilliant surrounded by darkness. A miraculous appearance, 
a metaphorical reference or no literally there was noor showering from his face possible fama kanat illa as-sa'a a while passed away wa idha bi waladi al-hasan qad aqbal so obviously if hasan alayhi salam could come in a short while that means they must have been near around the Ahlul Bayt normally and usually if circumstances allowed them, they chose to stay near the house of the Prophet and the house of God. You notice even after the death of the Holy Prophet, they always chose a residence close to the house of the Prophet and to the mosque of the Prophet. Yes, when they were forced, then they left, they went to Kufa, or they went to Karbala, or they went to Khurasan, or they went to Baghdad, or they went to Samarra, or there's one living one who is now moving all over because there is no safe place for him. But otherwise, given the option, that's the place you'll find them, near the Prophet, near the Mosque of the Prophet. So in a short while, Hassan appeared, alayhi salam, and he said, Assalamu alayki ya ummah. My dear, respected, loving, beloved mother. Respect to the mother. Problem is, in our relationship between parents and children, these we consider these as unnecessary courtesies. Yes, it's unnecessary courtesy if it's artificial and it's a pretense. But if it is genuine, if it is true, it's authentic, it must be expressed. Mustahab to express it. The Imam did it. فَقُلْتُ وَعَلَيْكَ السَّلَامُ يَا قُرَّةَ عَيْنِي وَثَمَرَةَ فُؤَادِي And I also replied to him, Salam on you, Hassan. No. Salam on you, my light and my delight. The light of my eyes and the delight of my heart. You want one secret of training children. To actualize their potential, praise them. You want to raise them to be good, praise them when they do good. Motivate them, stimulate them, make them feel loved, make them feel confident, therefore. Acknowledge their good work, push them to achieve better. Affirm who they are, pious and righteous make them aim high and of course if they uh, fail to achieve support them of course but <laughs> on the other side be careful don't praise too much or don't praise uh, in a fake unreal manner it gives the wrong message it makes them feel overconfident then and that's a wrong effect on children فَقَالَ يَا إِنِّي أَشُمُّ عِنْدَكِ رَائِحَةً طَيِّبًا My dear, beloved, respected mother, I've noticed something strange today. There's a fragrant, pleasant fragrance around here. Mustahab, encourage curiosity in children. Let them be observant, let them be alert, let them be attentive to the environment. If there are changes, let them inquire, let them ask. كَأَنَّهَا رَائِحَةُ جَدِّي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ It's the fragrance of the Prophet. No, no, no. It's as if it is the fragrance of the Prophet. I'm not sure. I think most probably it resembles that of the Prophet. Hassan is teaching us, alayhi salam, don't jump to conclusions. Yes, you have your speculation, you have your probability, and therefore you make your inquiry to verify and confirm, is that true or not? The Prophet ﷺ, it seems to have a special, unique, exclusive fragrance in such a way that wherever he is, he can be identified with it. Mustahab, therefore, to have fragrance, in fact, Mustahab, to have a unique, special, exclusive fragrance, therefore. فَقُلْتُ نَعَمْ إِنَّ جَدَّكَ تَحْتَ الْكِسَى the mother also should be responsive, should, should, she should pay attention to the questions of the children, she should not ignore, don't disturb me, go and, go and do your work. Uh -uh. Acknowledge, listen, respond, encourage, let him ask, and she guides him. He is under the cloak. 
فَأَقْبَلَ الْحَسَنُ نَحْوَ الْكِسَاء So he immediately proceeds towards the cloak, doesn't do anything else. He could have said, oh, he's resting, let me not disturb him. The mother could have said, yes, he's under the kisa, don't disturb him. In both cases, they would have been justified. When the Prophet came, he said, I'm feeling weak. But it seems that weakness was not of a degree and intensity to prevent him from allowing others to come and visit him. And therefore they went. It is not possible for someone to be in the presence of such a high personality and the first duty being to go and greet him and to show respect and reverence and to see what I can do to serve him or to see what I can do to learn from him. I cannot engage in any other activity at that time. So Aqbal al-Hasan, Hasan alayhi salam, rushes to the grandfather. وقال, As-salamu alayk ya jaddah, ya Rasulullah. Same approach. He could have easily said, Salam, or Salam grandfather. Salam, my dear grandfather. Salam, all the messenger of God. If somebody occupies a position of authority, acknowledge, affirm, and speak out, declare that status as a, ma as a matter of respect. So don't miss the opportunity to go towards the higher authority, spiritual authority to gain from him. One of the ulama has quoted this hadith. He says that, مَنْ مَشَى إِلَى الْعَالِمِ خُطْوَتَيْنِ وَجَلَسَ عِنْدَهُ لَحْظَتَيْنِ وَتَعَلَّمَ مِنْهُ مَسْأَلَتَيْنِ وَبَنَ اللَّهُ لَهُ جَنَّتَيْنِ كُلٌّ كُلُّ جَنَّةٍ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا مَرَّتَيْنِ If you come across an alim from whom you can benefit something, every two steps you take, you will be rewarded. You go and sit even for two moments in his presence to learn, you'll be rewarded. And if you learn from him even two mas'ala, you'll be rewarded. In fact, the reward will be so great that you will be granted two stations in Jannah. Each station, one bigger than the other, as big as the dunya is. Kwanini, kusababu, that one mas'ala can change your life from a direction towards Jahannam to go towards Jannah. It's impossible for Hassan, therefore, or anybody else to know the Prophet is in the house and to do anything else but to first go to him and to seek to pay respect and learn from him. So he comes to the presence and he says, He doesn't jump into the cloak. Very respectful. Salam. May I? I seek permission to join you. Is it, is it of no bother to you if I come and associate myself with you? In the Quran, in Surah Nur, Allah says, whenever children come to the private chamber of the parents, they're allowed to do so, but not any time and every time. There are times of the day when they should not be allowed. Night time, Zohar time, when the parents need time for exclusive rest or exclusive privacy, children should not be allowed into that private chamber. And therefore, it's very respectful, in fact, necessary to seek permission to gain access to that inner chamber. Faqala, the Holy Prophet responds, Wa alayka salam. Again, very respectful. He doesn't say, Salam on you, Hassan, welcome. Uh -uh. Wa alayka salam, ya waladi. I pray to God that He grants you peace and purity and perfection. I pray that you be close to God the Salam. Alayka Salam. Oh my dear, beloved, respected, much loved son. Son. Well, he was a grandson. And then also from the daughter's side. Uh -uh. The daughter's son is your son. Not only in the case of the Prophet, in all cases, the, the grandson should be respected as your own son. 
and if he has a spiritual status, acknowledge it. How the, the Qiyamah we are told is going to be as long as a thousand in one ayah, Surah Sajda, or as long as 50,000 years as in Surah Ma'arij, a very long time period, and it's going to be very hot, and therefore people are going to be thirsty, and therefore people will require to quench their thirst. The Hawd is the only source of quenching the thirst. In the dunya, the soul was thirsty for truth, for justice, for purity, for piety, for righteousness, for perfection. And there was only one source that could give you something to quench that spiritual thirst. Those of us who seek to quench our spiritual thirst from Hassan and the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, therefore will be allowed to go to the Hawd and be quenched from that Hawd. Incidentally, Imam Hussein salam later on comes and repeats the same things with the mother, with the grandfather, except for one difference. When he addresses the grandfather, he says, Assalamu alayka ya jaddah, ya man Allah, or the one who has been chosen by God to this ministry. Very important. If you allow me, I want you to think about this statement. Or oh, the one who has been chosen by God. Analyze, study, scrutinize all the problems of the Muslim Ummah. It boils down to one thing. They never accepted that the Prophet is chosen by God. Therefore, what he speaks is what God inspires him. Whether it's in wartime or peacetime. In wartime, they abandon him in Uhud. In peacetime, they objected against him in Salah. If you accept the Prophet as the ultimate and the absolute representative of God, therefore what he does or doesn't do, whether he fights or makes peace, whether he instructs or keeps silent, every act of his is inspired by God. Whenever we face problems is when we think, I think I'm like the Prophet, if not better than the Prophet. The Prophet can make mistakes. Oh. The reason Imam Hussain and the followers of Imam are to be respected and rewarded is because they acknowledge the unique status of the Prophet. Salam on you. Man Allah. And of course the Prophet then responds, Wa alayka salam ya waladi. But unlike for Imam Hassan, for Imam Hussein, the Prophet says, Wa ya shafi'a ummati, or the one who shall intercede for the ummah. Everyone is going to intercede for the Ummah of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. Lakini, amongst them some will be more than others. Wanini, kusababu shafa'a is the result, is the fruit. The seed is here. If in the dunya somebody is guided through the Ahlul Bayt, that guidance will appear as shafa'a on the Day of Judgment. The number of people who are guided to the truth, to justice, to fight against oppression, to sympathize with the oppressed, the number of people is most through Imam Hussein And finally, she enters his presence and when all of them had assembled and collected, she says the Holy Prophet then lifted up the cloak and then he covered us and then he prayed and he pointed to the heavens. And he made a dua whereby he says that Allahumma inna ha'ula'i ahlu bayti These are the members of my household. According to the riwayah which says that this incident took place in the house of Umm Salama. The incident is that the holy lady Fatima brought some food for her father and then she was invited into the cloak. Umm Salama says that I stood, uh, the Prophet visited my chamber, my house, and he asked me not to allow anyone to enter the house. I want to rest, except if these four people come, you can allow them in. 
And the Umm Salama narration says, I stood at the door guarding, but I saw something strange. Whenever the Prophet received a gift, food, he would always offer it to me. So when the holy lady brought this food to the Prophet, I on my own went and said, I also want something. And the Prophet said, no, this thing is not for you. And when the Prophet lifted up the cloak, she says, because these four people were close to him, I also went and wanted to be included in the cloak. And the Prophet said, no, you stay where you are. Don't come near. But no, you are not part of this group. Interesting. A third riwayah says, she came and she tried to pop her head into the cloak and the Prophet pushed her out. Whoa, that's a bit rude. No, this is a drama. Allow me to say, the Prophet could have easily declared, you want to know who my Ahlul Bayt is? It's these four people. Why have a cloak and then cover and then exclude dramatically others? Make it absolutely clear. Just because the incident happens in the house of one of the wives of the Prophet, even that wife is not included. Very important. To me, Hadith Kisa is drama. It's theater. It's deliberate planned display and demonstration of exclusivity that only these people are from me. Biologically, no. No. Yes, Fatima is the daughter. Yes, Hassan and Hussein are the grandsons. Yes, Ali is the cousin. Lakini, the Prophet said, I've got no relationship to Abu Lahab, my relative. He's got my blood, but he's not my relative. Ibrahim said, Uncle Azar, I've got nothing to do with him. Baba'a. No, my son. No, he's not my son. Biological reason they entered into the cloak? Absolutely not. Look at what the Prophet says about them. Physically only? No. Physically only? No. Only blood and flesh? No. Blood and flesh are examples. The bones. The nerves, the skin, the hair, everything of theirs is part of me. In my lifetime, but especially so after my death. Whosoever hurts them, hurts me. يُؤْلِمُنِي مَا يُؤْلِمُهُمْ يَحْزُنُنِي مَا يَحْزُنُهُمْ The Prophet didn't say, يَفْرَحُنِي مَا يَفْرَحُهُمْ Interesting. It seems the Ahlul Bayt were not decreed to have farah after the Prophet. I'm at war with whosoever is at war with them. Why? Oh, the future, there's going to be war with them. There'll be those who are at peace with them, and there's those who will oppose them. And finally, he says that, O oh Lord, remove. إِنَّهُمْ مِنِّي وَأَنَا مِنْهُمْ فَجْعَلْ صَلَوَاتِكَ وَبَرَكَاتِكَ Salawat is your care and your attention to them. Baraka, continuous grace to them. Rahma, the highest mercy to them. Ghufranak, your forgiveness and pardon. Nobody's perfect. In front of God, yes, the Ahlul Bayt related to us are perfect. But related to God, they are defective. Ghufranak, O Lord, to the Ahlul Bayt. وَالْرِضْوَانَكْ And the highest, highest anyone can aspire for. And that is the ultimate pleasure of God. عَلَيَّ وَعَلَيْهِمْ وَأَذْهِبْ عَنْهُمُ الرِّجْسَ وَطَهِّرْهُمْ تَطْهِيرًا I would like to conclude by two points. The next part of the hadith then says that when the Prophet made this dua, immediately it was answered. 
فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي وسكان سماواتي and then that whole story I did not create the heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon and the different celestial objects in orbit I didn't create any of them but in the love of these five who are these five the prophet and his daughter and his two grandsons and his son-in-law and cousin no 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 who is there under there it's Ali and his father-in-law and his wife and his two children no 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 who is down there Hassan and Hussein their grandfather their father and their mother no they are being all introduced as relations of the holy lady Kwanini, each one of them has got a special status because of her point number one point number two how and why inshallah we'll have to discuss on some other occasion but for example the father she is introduced as Ummu Abiha the father as if she is the mother to her father the husband introduced as the one who will not have a peer and a match and an equal had it not been for Fatima. The, grand, the sons, obviously, they are nothing had it not been for her. And of course, all the progeny from, from Imam Hussein alayhi salam's descendants. But point number two, I would like to remind ourselves, and that is, Allah is proud to say that I have created the whole of the universe in love of these five Kwanini. in the Quran four reasons are given for why Allah creates Allah creates to test us Surah Mulk oh, to see who is the best who is more pious who is more righteous who is more good who is more pure who is more virtuous who is more sacrificing Allah creates so that we may know him Surah Talaq ayah 12 Allah creates so that we may worship Him, Surah Dhariyat. Allah creates us so that He may have mercy as a reward for our worship, Surah Hud. Synthesize all these four and you discover that these five people achieved the goal of perfection to the ultimate level. Test, they gave the ultimate test beyond which not possible for any human being. Purpose of creation is to know God. Nobody knew God better than them. Produce any sermon to equal that of Ali ibn Abi Talib in five years. Produce anything which those five years are an expansion of the summary version which the Holy Lady presented in the Mosque of the Prophet. Purpose of creation is to worship God. Nobody worshiped God better than them. Purpose of God is to be able to qualify, to deserve, to receive His special reward and mercy and grace. Nobody received greater reward and support and mercy other than these five. Conclusion. Whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not, every day in the Salah, we reiterate the message of Hadith Kisa. No salah is complete without tashahud. And no tashahud is complete without the shahada on the status of the Prophet. Ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. But when you say rasool, these are lahmuhum lahmi, damuhum dami, yu'limuni ma yu'limuhum. They are his flesh and blood. Even if you don't mention them, they are already mentioned. The moment you mention the Prophet, you've mentioned all these extensions of flesh and blood, number one. And number two, the fact that after tashahud we send salawat. There is no salah without salawat. Imam Shafi'i says, Ya ahla bayta rasulillahi hubbukumu fardum min Allahi fil Qur'ani anzalahu to love you is a duty and a commandment revealed in the Quran. Kafakum min azim al qadri annakum. Enough for your status is that you, man lam yusalli alaykum la salata la. Whosoever does not send salawat on you, his salah is incomplete. Kwanini. 
Kwa sababu sala means, O oh Lord, I thank you for all the bounties. Which bounty is greater? More effective, more productive in guiding us, in saving us, in protecting us from the fire of hell, in showing us the right way in all aspects of our lives, more than the path of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as whose contracts we shall be solemnizing tonight. Therefore, allow me to give a common message to all these couples who are getting married. And this message will be based on the Hadith al Kisa. Message number one is notice in Hadith al Kisa, it is the holy lady who is reporting this incident to Jabir bin Abdullah al Ansari. And therefore, it shows us that as a woman, she has to be educated, she has to be learning the truth, the wisdom, and to be able to share it and to publicize it. Number two, notice that in all the interactions, the holy lady begins with salam, all the children continue with salam, including the husband. A successful marriage is one where there is salam, there is peace, there is love, there is harmony, there is respect, there is honor, there is service, there is sacrifice. And all of this indicated by salam, not a false courtesy, a true, genuine, authentic salam from the heart. Number three, even the spouses, when Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib comes, she addresses him, she tells him, Assalamu alayka ya Abal Hassan ya Amir al Mu'mineen. She doesn't say, Ali, salam. Uh -uh. Very respectful. Ya Abal Hassan. Abul Hassan is a respectful appellation. To address someone in the Arab custom through an appellation is to give him respect. And number two, she says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen. He enjoys a particular spiritual status. Acknowledge and therefore show respect. In return, Imam Ali salam also shows respect to her by saying that she's bint Rasulullah and she's Sayyid Nisa al Alameen. In other words, remember the most important foundation of a strong, solid, successful marriage is respect. If you want to know which marriage is going to fail, look at the degree of disrespect, ridicule, humiliation, degradation, abuse that goes on between the spouses. And you can easily predict how long this marriage is not going to last. And finally, notice the concern. The moment she comes to know that the father is not feeling well, immediately she makes a prayer. And therefore every effort to wish good and the best of the health. If this love and concern and service and sacrifice is there, if this respect and praise and affirmation and acknowledgement is there, and if this salam and peace and harmony and cooperation is there, a marriage is promised with success and growth and therefore reward from Allah. Let's pray to Allah for tawfiq. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.